Okay. So this presentation is uh, called Ecclesiastical Latin Pronunciation. So the reason I'm calling it Ecclesiastical Latin is because, I, I don't know if you know, but the way that uh, Ecclesiastical comes from the Latin word for Ecclesia, which means church. It means church pronunciation. So the church pronounces Latin differently than classical Latinists pronounce Latin. So if you were to go to college and study Latin or at a lot of public high schools when you study Latin, the way that they pronounce Latin is the way they believe the ancient Romans would have pronounced it, which is very different from the way the church pronounces it. So, for example, you may have heard the expression, uh, veni vidi vici, right? That's, that Caesar said, veni vidi vici, I came, I saw, I conquered. Veni vidi vici. Well, that's the church pronunciation, the ecclesi ecclesiastical pronunciation of that. A classical Latinist would say that what he said was, veni vidi wiki, right? <laughs> that's the classical pronunciation of Latin, right? Um, which sounds funny to us. But apparently to the Romans it didn't, or at least that's what, we, what, what classes believe that it would have been the way that it would have been pronounced. So church Latin is a very Italianized form of Latin, and I think it's a, it's a more sonorous form of Latin in the way that it's pronounced. But it probably is not the way that the ancient Romans would have spoken it. So it's kind of developed over time, and it, it sounds much more Italianized. Um, and uh, I think is often better for singing and, and chanting is um, uh, what is used for. So these, these, that's why the Latin that we use in church and mass is ecclesiastical Latin, right? It's ecclesiastical Latin. So <clears throat> we'll begin by taking a look at the vowels because that's where everything always uh, kind of starts. Most of the consonants sound exactly like they do in English. Okay, most of the consonants, consonants, you can generally figure out if you look at it, if you know English, they'll sound just like in English. The vowels all only have, in ecclesiastical Latin, one sound, and it's all the long sounds, right? It's all the long sounds. So it's, it, the A is ah, right? The E is A, the I is E, the O is O, the U is U, like in moo. And the Y is E, just like the I. There's actually no Y in Latin. The Y comes from Greek. So it's, it's, uh, uh, it's, pulling, it's pulling in from the Greek. So just like today, you know, when people want to sound smart, they'll sometimes say something in Latin, right? For the Romans, when they wanted to sound smart, they said it in Greek. They would say something in Greek. So it was kind of considered the high, the high language. So it's kind of the pulling in, uh, pulling in of the... Um, of the, uh, uh, of the Greek. In fact, I remember when we were studying, uh, when I was studying Latin, and um, uh, you're, you're all familiar with Caesar saying, um, et tu brute, right? So Shakespeare has him say it in Latin, et tu brute. Everything's in English, but then when he says it, he says it in Latin, et tu brute. Well, the, the, the Latin version of that same story, he has him say it in Greek, kai su technon. Right? So the story is written in Latin, but when Caesar speaks in that point, instead of saying et tu brute, he says kai su technon, which is the Greek, kind of the Greek version of it, and use actually son, right? Uh, and, and so he doesn't call him by his name, Brutus, uh, not, and you too, Brutus. He calls him, uh, and you, son, kai su technon. Um, so, uh, so the Y that you will see is coming in from the Greek, so there's no actual Y in Latin. And then you have, uh, so all these just have the one sound, and it's kind of, it's the, that long sound. Now, in classical Latin, they do make a distinction between the long, the ah, and the short a, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, right, a, eh, eh. but in, in the way that we pronounce it and the way that it's sung, it generally is only done with the long sound, so it's just the one sound, ah, a, e, o, u, ah, a, e, o, u. And then you have what we call diphthongs. That's these things with the two, um, uh, two letters combined. And those, at one time, would have been two separate letters. And they would have both been pronounced. But over time, they came together to form one sound. And the A-E and the O-E both sound like the E, the A sound, right? The A sound. So, and if you think, right, if you say the two letters together, you can see I... I, 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 as you say it faster and faster, they kind of run in together and make that A sound, right? Oi, 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 oi. So, um, 
That's how they kind of came to it. And the, the, the O-E, a lot of the O-E words actually, once again, uh, came in from Greek, came in from the Greek. And then there's an A-U, which is another diphthong, right, which sounds like ow, right? Like when you stub your toe and you say ow, right? So that's that ow sound. So in Latin, every vowel is pronounced, okay? And every vowel creates another syllable, so whenever you see vowels next to each other, unless they're diphthongs like these, each one is pronounced, right? And they're going to create another syllable. And um, uh, so, yeah, so that's how you determine kind of the, um, uh, the syllables and where to break things up in Latin, okay? Where to break things up. Uh, Latin is never stressed on the last syllable. It's never stressed on the ultimate syllable. Okay? So the stress is always on the penultimate or the antepenultimate syllable. So the penultimate syllable is the syllable right before the last syllable, and the antepenultimate syllable is the syllable before the next to the last syllable. So Latin's always in one of those two syllables, but it's never pronounced on the last syllable. So the accent never goes on the last syllable. Okay? Never on the ultimate, always in the penultimate or the antepenultimate syllable. Those are always the syllable that you're going to stress. Very often in ecclesiastical Latin, what you will see, right, get back to this in a second, what you will see right, are um, these accent marks. Do you see like sanctificator? I don't know. This, you see this accent mark? Right? Those, aren't, uh, those aren't actually in Latin. Okay? That's just in church Latin, and they do that in church Latin so that you don't have to figure out whether it's on the penultimate or antepenultimate syllable. So anytime you have a word that has more than two syllables, usually in, in, in church Latin documents and uh, in liturgical documents, things like that, you will see that accent mark if it has more than two syllables. Because if it has only one syllable, obviously you stress the one syllable. If it has two syllables, you know you never stress the last syllable, so you know you always stress the first syllable, right? So if it has three syllables or more, that's when you start to ask, well, do I stress the penultimate or the antepenultimate, right? And which one of these do I stress? And there are rules for that uh, based on, you know, the, the length of the, the penultimate vowel. Um, but, but in Ecclesiastical Latin, we generally, you know, don't, don't pay too much attention to that. But based on the length of the, the, the penultimate vowel, it is what determines whether it's stressed on the penultimate or antepenultimate syllable. And, you know, in, to help people so they don't have to think about, well, you know, is this, you know, is this E, like sanctificator, is this E short or is this E long, right? They just put the accent marks in there for you so that you don't have to think about it and remember all the rules and do all that, right, to make it easier. So it's because this E is long, that's why there's the accent there. And here it's, here it's on the antepenultimate, adveniat, right? Every vowel, adveniat. So every vowel is a syllable, so there are four syllables here. Adveniat. And so uh, it's because this I is short, that's why the accent is on the ve here. If the I were long, it would be adveniat. But because the I is short, it's adveniat. So there are rules for, for why they are, but you don't need to know all those. This isn't a, a class in Latin, and most you know, church Latin people, they, they so used to seeing these accent marks that oftentimes we, and it don't uh, always um, know all those rules or know which, because uh, in a lot of, our, of, of, of ecclesiastical Latin textbooks, they don't, they don't put, uh, they don't teach you which vowels are short and which vowels are long. In classical Latin, it's a big, it's a big deal. And, and if you study Latin properly, they'll, you know, they'll, they'll kind of teach you all that. But it's kind of getting into the weeds. So the vowels are very important, right? If you know how to pronounce all the vowels, you're, you're, you're very, uh, very set in moving forward. So consonants, as I said, most of the consonants sound right, just like they do in English. There are a few exceptions. So the C, right? is going to have a ch sound, a soft ch sound, like in church, when it comes before an I and E or a diphthong like A-E or O-E, right? A-E or O-E. So when it comes before those vowels, it's going to have a ch sound like chalice, chalice. Otherwise, it's going to have a hard sound. It's going to be a ka like car. So sikut, sikut, 
right? So it's a ka sound there, but it's a chalis here. It's a soft C sound in chalis or a hard K sound like in sikut, right? So if it comes before an E and I or an, or an AE or OE, then it's going to be cha. And if it's um, any, anywhere else you see it, it's going to be ka. The same with G, right? G is going to have a soft sound. It's going to be ja, ja like jut, right? Ja when it's before an E and I or a Y. But anywhere else is going to be hard like ga, like gut. So ajimus, ajimus, right? So it's a soft because it's before an I, ajimus, but it's gloria, gloria. So it's a ga, it's a hard G here because it's not before an E, an I, or a Y, right? Gloria, ajimus. And notice I put the accents here because this is three syllables, right? Ajimus. So you ask yourself, well, is it on the penultimate or the antipenultimate? Is it ajimus or ajimus? So it's ajimus. Is it gloria or gloria, right? And it's gloria. So the accent will tell you. It's always going to be the penultimate or antipenultimate syllable when you have three or more syllables. The H, so very often when you're speaking Latin, you will hear the H very slightly. But when you're singing it in, in, in church, they, they always say it should not be heard at all. You should not even slightly hear it, right? It should be completely non-existent. So instead of saying uh, habemus, Right, it's abemus, abemus. Oh, I didn't put the accent here. It's the accent is on the e, abemus, abemus. Right. So, uh, so instead, of, so you don't really pronounce it. Uh, if you never, and Italians, if you know Italian, um, they don't really, they don't pronounce their h's. So abemus. So uh, we get that from there, and it does make it very sonorous when you're singing if you don't really pronounce that ha, the ha, right. Um, and then uh, the J, so note that there's, no, there's really no J in Latin, okay? Uh, you will see it sometimes written, but uh, J is just the consonantal form of I, okay? J is just the consonantal form of I, so there's no real J, but when you see it, right, uh, it sounds like the consonant Y in English, right? So Y, a Y sound, right? Jesus. Jesus, not Jesus, Jesus. So not a ja sound, but a ya sound. So that soft Y, right? Like your or things like that. So um, the, same is, the same is true of, um, of the letter V, right? The V is just a consonantal form of U, right? So if you, if you think of U before another vowel and you say them together really quickly, Right? It starts to, to make kind of a V sound. Right? Or I, before another vowel, it kind of starts to make kind of a, a Y sound if you say them together quickly. We have the same thing in English. Right? In English, Y is both a vowel and a consonant. Right? So sometimes it's a vowel and sometimes it's like your. It's a, it's a cons consonant there when you say your or you. But cry, right? it's a vowel there. So... Um, the same thing happened with I and with, um, and with J, right? I, I mean, I and U, right? I is really the, 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 the letter is I, but sometimes it's used as a vowel and sometimes it's used as a consonant. And so when it starts to be used as a consonant, some places you'll see it change to this J, but technically there is really no J. The same thing kind of happened with U, right? Um, do you ever notice that we call the letter right, that we call this letter, right, double U, not double V, right? Why don't we call this double V? Because it looks like two Vs, right? And it's a consonant, just like V is a consonant. So why don't we call it double V? Because there was really no V, it's a double U, because U was what kind of became the consonant, right? So, uh, so that's kind of where, uh, where that comes from. Um, uh, so I, I remember when John Paul II, uh, when John Paul II was made pope, and he signed his name in Latin, right? Ioannes, right? In Latin, John uh, John is Ioannes. So, right? Ioannes, right? Ioannis, Ioannes, Ioannis, 
And so, um, uh, well, I'll put it in, I'll put it in the nominative, you honest, right? You honest. So he, he uh, John Paul II, because he was Ioannis Paulus, right? Paulus, right? Secundus. And he would, he would write with a J, right? Ioannis, right? Paulus. Secundus. And uh, I don't, uh, sometimes you'll see an H in here, which isn't pronounced, like I said. Um, uh, I'm not, I don't remember if he wrote it with an H or not. But anyways, the, 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 the Latinist at the Vatican, the chief Latinist of the Vatican, when he saw him sign documents with a J, right, he said to him, uh, you know, Your Holiness, there's no J in Latin, right? You should sign it with an I. And John Paul said, well, there is now. <laughs> right? So I guess you can do that when you're Pope, right? So there is now. So, um, but uh, but you're, you're, but uh, most people will just uh, will just do it in the eye. But that's sometimes why you'll see J, and sometimes why you won't see why you won't see J. But it's the same. It's the same letter. Uh, and even in some places, you'll see. Um, I, I don't know. Like sometimes you you see ancient uh, uh, Greek inscriptions, and instead of a U, you'll see a V. Right? It'll look like a, it'll look like a V. That was because that's how it was written. But that was their U, right? And so that U would be sometimes a vowel and sometimes a consonant, and um, and you sometimes even see that in in, uh, in documents, right? Where where they don't where they don't write V, they just write everything with a U. But that's not as common as writing everything with an I. And then there's there's this other uh, uh, a combination of letters, this G N, right? This G N, which in ecclesiastical Latin, in in, in classical Latin, you would pronounce both, right? Gna. Gna. So you pronounce both. But in ecclesiastical Latin, and again in classical, these, they would just have these hard sounds. They don't make these soft sounds, which kind of soften the agimus, right, instead of the agimus. You can kind of hear how much more sonorous the agimus is than agimus, right? Kailis. Kailis. That isn't as sonorous as chelis if you're trying to sing it. All right, I'll listen to it. So this GN has, a, 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 the closest in English is like the NY, like in canyon, right? Or in Spanish, your, your ñ, like mañana, that ñ sound, that ñ sound, canyon or mañana. So that's why it's años, right? Años day, that GN is a ñ sound, ñ. And then uh, S is normally just a sa, just a regular S. But oftentimes when you see it between two vowels, when you see it between two vowels, it gets softened a little bit and sounds a lot like a Z. So like, so instead of miserere, it's miserere, miserere, right? Instead of miserere, it's miserere when you hear it. And that, uh, when you hear it sung, right, correctly, it, it sounds a lot better, miserere, right, than miserere, right? Miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi. Miserere nobis. Miserere. Miserere. It doesn't, it doesn't sound quite as, as nice. So when you see that S between two vowels, it's a, it has just kind of that uh, softening a little bit more to that zere nobis. The SC. When it's followed once again by an E or an I, makes a sh sound. So sushi pay, sushi pay, right? Sushi pay, sh sound, right? Sh. Again, all of this is ecclesiastical Latin. It's all church Latin, that sh. And then this T-I, this T-I, when it's followed by a vowel, has a T-S like a tz, 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 tz. Right, tentationem. So not tentationem, 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 tentationem. Right, in tentationem. So ti followed by a vowel. Otherwise, if it's not followed by a vowel, then you're going to just hear the t. Right. Um, uh, if you see a th, if you see a th. That's always pronounced just T. Okay. Oops. TH. I don't have it on there, but uh, if you see a TH, okay, that's just going to be a T. So 
like right, Tomas, Tomas, not Thomas. It's not a th sound, it's just a t Tomas or Catholicum, right, Unam Sanctum, Catholicum, uh, Unam Sanctum, Ecclesiam, <laughs> Unam Sanctum, Catholicum. At apostolicum, right? Unam sanctum, catholicum, et apostolicum, ecclesiam. Right? I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. Right? Unam sanctum, catholicum, et apostolicum. So that TH is just a, a T sound, ta, catholicum. catholicum. And then there's the excelsis, right? Gloria in excelsis Deo. That, that XC. Right? Gloria in excelsis Deo. So it's not excelsis. It might look like an excelsis because C before E has a ch sound. So you might be tempted to say excelsis, right? But um, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, this word is pronounced excelsis, excelsis. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Gloria in excelsis Deo. So those are your, uh, your consonants, right? The vowels should be pretty easy. The consonants, it's just in time, right? You can, uh, you'll uh, learn these rules, right, uh, for the consonantal sounds, right? Uh, okay. So here are some of the, uh, uh, the expressions that, you, that you're trying to learn how to pronounce, right, that we use in, uh, in the Mass in Latin. So it's, uh, the, the why, the why, as I said, this is coming from the Greek. You know that Kyrie eleison is Greek. And the why is actually a transliteration of you in Greek, right? It's a translation of a you. So the Greek word is kurie, kurie, right? But when it comes into Latin and we spell it with the, with the y, it now we pronounce it kyrie, right? Kyrie. And so you notice I have an accent there because there's three vowels, Y, I, and E. So there are three syllables, kir, di, a. There's three syllables there, kir, ri, a, kir, di, a, kir, di, a, a, lay, zone. kir, di, a, a, lay, zone. Right? So again, because this S is between two vowels, it has kind of a Z sound, kir, di, a, a, lay, zone. Right? So you wouldn't do the hard, a, lay, zone. You do a soft LA zone. Kyrie LA zone. Can everyone repeat after me? Kyrie LA zone. LA zone, yes. But the, the accent is on the LA, right? LA zone. Right, so this is one, four syllables, right? A, LA, E zone. And so do I stress the LA or do I stress the, the, the E, right? And so the rule, uh, that's why the accent is there to tell you. You stress the lay and not the e. Right? Christe, right? Christe eleison. Uh, so the uh, ch is just a c, so there, you don't pronounce the h. Christe eleison. Christe eleison. And the word, you know, Christe also actually comes from the Greek, so we 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 brought it in from uh, from Greek, and so um, in Greek. The um, uh, the the Greek word is um, ki pro iota sigma tau omicron sigma, right? Christos, right? It's Christos like that in Greek, and so ki. This is the ch translated ch r i s T O S, right? So in the Latin, it becomes Christus. The Christos becomes Christus, right? Where we get the Christ. And if you look at the, the first two letters of Christ, right? Key is the C H, and Hro, a capital Hro, looks like this. This would be what the capital Rho would look like. So key Rho, right? This is the Greek letter key. This is the Greek letter rho, right? Key rho. So when we put them together, right, we get this. 
that's where your key rho came from, comes from, right? So this key rho, when you see this, right, is, um, uh, it's not a px, right? Although if any of you go to Pius or know about Pius X, right, they kind of borrowed this symbol from the Greek for Pius X high school, right? Um, because in Latin, the x is a 10. But the key rho is from the first two letters of Christos, right? And it's this Christos, this key rho, this Christos, this is where people get, right? This is how they got Xmas. It's, this isn't an X, it's a key, right? It's a key. So it, this is the Christos, right? The key representing the Christos, right? Christmas, right? So that's, that's if you ever wondered where, how people got to Xmas from Christmas, that's where it comes from, right? It comes from this Christos, right? From that Christos. So there's your little bit of... Uh, bit of Greek also. And then if you ever see in Christian art, right, uh, Jesus, right, Jesus, oops, sorry, Jesus, Jesus, right, that's the Greek for Jesus, okay, and if you write these three letters in um, capitalized, this is the I, this is the eta, capital eta, and this is the capital sigma, right? This is Iota, uh, Iota, Eta, Sigma, right? I-E-S-O-U-S, right? I-E-S-O-U-S. So you see where we get Jesus from. So Iota, Eta, Sigma, right? And so this is where people often get the I-H-S, right? When you see the I-H-S symbol, okay? It's not actually an H. It's not I-H-S. It's actually... Eoda, eta, sigma. Eoda, eta, sigma. So this eta, right, small eta, looks like this. Capital eta looks like this, which looks a lot like our H. So the symbol really isn't IHS. It's Eoda, eta, sigma. It stands for Jesus, the first few letters of Jesus. So that's where those, uh, those kind of Christian symbols you see in Christian art come from. Did you guys know that already? Okay, so Christe eleis on Kyrie. So you know, we know these are Greek, right? Et cum spiritu tuo, right? Et cum spiritu tuo, and with thy spirit, right? Dominus fobiscum. Et, oh, I'm sorry, it's not um, it should be cum. That's a spelling error. Et, it should be a C U M. I'm sorry, I, I uh, wrote that wrong. It should be uh, et cum spiritu tuo, cum, 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 et cum spiritu tuo, right? So when the priest says dominus fobiscum, you say et cum spiritu tuo, right? So accent on the spear, on the first syllable, spiritu tuo. And this is two, two syllables, so you always stress the first one. So it's 2-O, 2-O. That's why it doesn't need an accent, because you know you don't stress the last syllable. Et cum spiritu 2-O. Hmm? Spiritu 2-O. Hmm? Et cum spiritu 2-O. And then uh, I have this word in here because this is one of my pet peeves. <laughs> in English, this word is pronounced Amen. Okay, in English, the word is pronounced amen. A, like hey, right? And men, like men. Amen. And the stress is on the men. Amen. That's how you pronounce the word in English. In Latin, the word is pronounced amen. Amen, right? And the stress is on the ah, right? Not the men. Amen. So the word amen is not a word, okay? Amen is not a word. Amen is a word, and amen is a word, but amen, amen is not a word, right? Amen is not a word. You can say amen, 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 or you can say amen. So if you're singing in Latin, you would pronounce it amen. If you're singing in English, you pronounce it amen. Right? So if you're speaking in Latin, you would say amen. If you're praying in Latin, if you're praying in English, you would end with amen. Amen. 
So in English, it's stressed on the men. In Latin, it's stressed on the ah. Both are men, but in Latin, it's ah, and in English, it's a. Uh, this is what you say when the, when the priest, um, uh, after he says um, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, right? glory to you, O Lord, gloria tibi domine, gloria tibi domine, gloria tibi domine. Repeat after me, gloria tibi domine. Very good. And then at the end of the gospel, when the priest says the, the um, verbum domini, the gospel of the Lord, right, you respond with laus tibi Christe. Laus tibi Christe. All right? And the laus here, uh, here's your AU diphthong, so it's just one sound laus tibi Christe. Laus tibi Christe. Hmm? Um, abemus ad dominum, right? This is, um, this is in the preface dialogue, right? Dominus fobiscum. Remember, there's a C there. <laughs> Dominus fobiscum. No, no, what's your response? When I say Dominus fobiscum, I'm saying the Lord be with you. Your response is? Et cum spiritu tuo, right? Dominus fobiscum, et cum spiritu tuo, right? The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Dominus fobiscum. Et cum spiritu tuo. And then he says, uh, uh, um, what is it in English? Uh, uh, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Uh, yeah, raise, how's it going in English? Uh, so in Latin, it's sursum corda. We, we, we elevate our hearts to the Lord. Um, uh, let us lift our... Uh, I'm, I'm lost in the English. Okay. But then, you know, in the dialogue, then he says, lift our hearts. And then uh, you respond, we have lifted them to the Lord, right? Let us give thanks to the Lord our God is right and just, right? Dinum et used to mess. So the response, right? Dominus fabiscum et cum spiritu tuo, sursum corda, abemus ad dominum, gratias agamus domino deo nostro, Dinum et justum est. So there's your GN again, that nya sound. Dinum et justum est. Dinum, right, first syllable, accent on the first syllable. Dinum et justum est. So there's that J sound, the use, that I being used as an I, as a, as a J sound, as a consonant, right? So you can hear it. If you, if you were saying it as an I, you... Eustum, 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 eustum. You can see how it becomes eustum, right? Eustum, 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 eustum. So how it develops, that sound develops into that consonantal sound, right? So dinum et eustum est. So that's the, the last response in the, in the preface dialogue. And then here's our T-I followed by a vowel. So there's your deo gratias. Gratias, right? T S I, Deo gratias. Thanks be to God, right? This is what we say after the first and second readings. Verbum Domini, Deo gratias. Verbum Domini, Deo gratias. And at the end of Mass, when the priest says, Ite misa est, we respond again, Deo gratias. Thanks be to God. Deo gratias, right? Uh, thanks be to God. Mm hmm. Dinum, dinum, dinum. So E, right? Here's the E sound. The I is the E, long I, E, dinum. And then that kenya sound, canyon. The G N is that nya sound, right? Dinum, dinum, dinum. Huh? Et, et, eustum, eustum, ya. So that Y is the ya sound, right? Like the like the uh, like your used to. Uh, it it is uh, it's generally translated. It is right and just. It is right and just. Isn't that what we say in English now? Yeah, yeah it is right and just. Right, dignified. Right. It is um, uh, dignified and just. It is right and just. Dinum et justum est. Deo gratias. 
And then this is, uh, this is what you say when the, when the priest says, uh, pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be accepted to God, the Almighty Father, right? And everyone will respond, right? Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my... Oh, no, I'm sorry. This is the uh, Dominum Sum Nunius. That's a different prayer. I'm sorry. That's the Shushipiat, which uh, you'll see later, but, but you won't have to learn that. Um, this is the, this is the uh, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb, right? Lord, I am not worthy. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter, right, under my roof, but only say the word and my soul will be cleansed, shall be healed, right? It will be sanated, right? Cleansed, sanate, the cleanse. Um, do we say sanate in English? Uh, sanation? Uh, do, you, do you know that word in English, to sanate? We, we use it in, in, in church law. I don't know if it's a commonly used word in English. It will be sanated, it will be, will be cleansed. So, domine non sum dignus, sud intra subte. If you go to the traditional Latin mass, you hear the priest say this all the time. Domine non sum dignus, sud intra subte to meum, sed tantum dic verbo et senabitur anima mea. All right? Domine non sum. So, in the traditional Latin mass, you, when the priest says it, he only says the domine non sum dignus part out loud. Lord, I am not worthy. And then he says the rest of it um, uh, silently. Lord, I'm not worthy. Lord, I'm not worthy. Lord, I'm not worthy. Domine non sum dignus. Domine non sum dignus. Domine non sum dignus. Right, so you, does that sound familiar when you go to the Latin Mass where the priest does that? And then right before the people receive, right, uh, the, the, the servers say it for them, right, and they do the same thing, but now he says the whole thing uh, out loud. And there the priest is saying it for the people. He's not saying it for himself. He's saying, he says, Ecce anus dei, ecce quitolit peccata mundi, right? Domine non sum dignus studentia subtectu meum, sed tantum dic verbo et senabitur anima mea. Domine non sum dignus studentia subtectu meum, sed tantum dic verbo et senabitur anima mea. Domine non sum dignus studentia subtectu meum, sed tantum dic verbo et senabitur anima mea. Try repeating after me. Domine non sum dignus. Ut entres, sub tectum meum, sed tantum, dic verbo, et senabitor, anima mea. Domine non sum dignus, ut entres, sub tectum meum, sed tantum, dic verbo, et senabitor, anima mea. So that's that prayer that you're saying at that point. Yes. Do it slowly one more time. Domine, non sum dignus, ut intres, sub tectum meum, sed tantum, dic verbo, et senabitor, anima mea. So it really is just like it looks, right? I mean, doesn't... Uh, I mean, if you know, the vowels are all long, right? O, E, A, domine, right? O, known, U, sum. You just need to know that, that you know, G-N is that canyon, dignus, dignus, right? You might be tempted to say dignus, 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 right? Keep the, the, the vowels long, dignus, instead of nus, nus, dignus. Ut, right? Ut. Intres, intres, sub, tectum, right? Tectum, just like it looks. E is long, U is long. Tectum, meum, right? You pronounce every vowel, meum. Sed, tantum, dic, verbo, right? Verbo. Uh, so you see all the consonants sound you know, pretty much like what you expect. Et, sanabitur, right, sanabitur, anima, mea, right? Not, not hard, right? Not hard, okay? So these are some of the most common ones, the ones that you, uh, you would use, Right? Uh, uh, a lot that you'll use, you know, the Kyrie and the Christe only, you know, happen right at the beginning. 
you do the et cum spiritu too quite a few times, the amen quite a few times, the, uh, this is the Gloria to be Domini and Laus to be Christe, or only uh, during the gospel there. All right, uh, preface dialogue, Abbe Musa Dominum, Deo Gratias, you do that a few times, right? And then the Dominum Sum Dinus, you do one, uh, three times, but in a row. Well, in the old Mass, in the new Mass, you would just do it once, Dominum Sum Dinus. No, EU is not a diphthong, no. The Mayum, no, that's not a diphthong, right? And so, yeah, sometimes... Uh, so I've, I wrote the diphthongs, I wrote the diphthongs like this, right, uh, alighted together like that, which you will often see. Sometimes you will see them just A-E next to each other, right, um, in the computer age. Although it's easy to make this symbol on a computer, when people are typing fast, they want to hit the special key to do it, and so they just write A-E, and you're just supposed to know that it's a diphthong. Um, but yes, those are, those are the only diphthongs, are the A-E, the O-E, and the A-U, right? Uh, these others, right, these vowels that are together, me, a, a, right, e, a, that's not a diphthong, right, and e, u is not a diphthong. So it's me, um, right, and me, a, right, gloria, so you pronounce every vowel, gloria, right. All right, so this is the main thing that, uh, that's, uh, that we're trying to do now that everyone's kind of getting hung up on, the pater noster, right? Um, uh, which, I mean, I'm sure you, you, know, you know, why do we teach kids the alphabet by singing? Because it's easier to learn something when you sing it than it is to speak it, right? So the, the music helps to ingrain it in your mind, so it helps you to be able to, to remember, so that's why we're, we're kind of singing it. Uh, the problem is that sometimes when you learn to sing something, then you have a hard time saying it. Right, and in seminary, a lot of guys we always learn we always sing the Salve Regina in seminary, right? Um, and we all learned it to, to to sing it, uh, but then a lot of guys can't say it; they can only sing it, right? So <laughs> they don't know how to speak it. Uh, if they had to just speak it, they can only uh, sing it. Uh, but the Pater Noster, this was something, um, you know, John Paul II. Uh, I mean, the Vatican, the Second Vatican Council said that the faithful are supposed to know all of their mass prayers in Latin. So everything that you say in English, you're supposed to be able to do in Latin, right? In the, even in the Novus Ordo. Um, but most priests, most parishes uh, have just kind of ignored that. And it's, like I said, it's been around. And every time a liturgical document comes out or the popes, ever since the, the 70s, ever since the, the Second Vatican Council, every time popes have written about um, of the liturgy, they always keep reiterating the faithful should know their parts in Latin. They should know some of the hymns in Latin. They should be able to respond to everything in Latin. And part of that is because it's the history of the church. It's the universal language. But also when, when, um, when you go to pray with the Pope or you pray in multicultural situations, which is often what it is in Rome with masses that the Pope does, right? the, the reason why we use the Latin is it's this common language that we then now all uh, are all able to say. And so if you don't know it, then you're not able to join in uh, into that. And so, uh, but it's beautiful when, you know, when you go to Mass with the Holy Father and you have people from all over the world and they're all, you know, singing the Pater Noser together or they're all saying Et Cum Spiritu Tuo together, right? Kyrie Eleison together. When they say all these things uh, together, they're, they're, they're separated by language, but the liturgy unites us and the Latin in the liturgy unites us even more because we all know that. Oh, well, because it's been, well, because it was the language, remember, we're Roman Catholic, and it was the language of Rome, so it's because it's, it goes all the way back to the very founding, the very beginning, right, of the church, and so that was, the, that was, the, that was the, the language everyone was speaking at the very beginning of the church, and then once, when it, when it stopped being a spoken language and a normal language that people spoke, the church maintained that language. So one of the, one of the reasons we do it um, in the church is for theological reasons because um, when you're using a, a living language, words change in meaning, right? We're seeing that right now in America, right? The whole movement with a change of language, right, and what it means. And, you know, you've probably seen, talked, heard about this movement about what is a woman, right? We can't even define these words now, right? So words keep changing in meaning, okay? Uh, some of you... Um, 
uh, who maybe are of my generation or older, remember when we were very young and the word gay just meant happy, right? And that it just changes. I mean, you can't use it to mean that anymore, right? It's just, it's just uh, the meaning is completely changed. And we, when, when now people re- look at old songs or, you know, the Flintstones, right? They have that, they have that in the, the Flintstones theme song. You'll have a gay old time. Right? Then people, you know, they, they interject the today's meaning into old songs or ancient things that didn't have that meaning back then. So, so when you're using a living language, the words are changing constantly in meaning. Whereas if you use a dead language, a language that's no longer spoken regularly, then the, the meaning of the words are frozen. And that makes it much easier to do theology because you know precisely what the word means. Right? Whereas if you're using it in a modern language, then the, 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 it, it could mean different things to different people right? in the same room who are hearing that same word right? um, uh, based on their, uh, you know, their, just their, their cultural experience could mean different things. But so theologically, it's very helpful to use a language that's not, that's not still you know, uh, changing and progressing and living in that way. Right? So the pater noster is our, here's the Our Father, right? And in, in the traditional Latin Mass, I have this part in red, the priest says the pater noster, and the only part that the people say is the very end, the sed libera nos amalo, sed libera nos amalo, right? But uh, in the Novus Ordo, uh, we, we sing the whole thing. You sing, sing the whole thing, or say the whole thing. So uh, why don't you listen to me say it first, so you hear what it sounds like, and see if you can follow along and see if it sounds the way that, that you think it should sound, right, based on what we've learned so far, right? It's pater noster, quies in celis, sanctificetur nomen tuum. So tuum, you're saying both use, tuum. So two, two, constant, two uh, syllables there, tuum. Adveniat renum tuum. So adveniat, this is four syllables, right? Adveniat, adveniat, renum, there's your nya again, renum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicut in celo et in terra, panem nostrum quotidianum. You'll sometimes see this as C-O, and sometimes you'll see it as Q-U, but it's essentially pronounced the same, quotidianum, quotidianum. Quotidianum da nobis odie, so the H is silent, odie, et dimite nobis debita nostra, sicut et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem, there's your TI before a vowel again, tentationem, 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 sed libera nos amalo, right? Said libera nos amalo. So try repeating after me. Pater noster. Qui es in celis. Sanctificetur. Nomen tuum. Adveniat. Renum tuum. Fiat. Voluntas tua. Sicut in celo, et in terra, panem nostrum, quotidianum, da nobis odie, et dimite nobis, debita nostra, sicut et nos, dimitimus, Debitoribus, nostris, et ne nos, inducas, intentationem, sed libera nos amalo. Very good. Uh, when I taught at Blessed Trinity, uh, all my students had to memorize the pater noster uh, uh, in my class, and you know most of them did not take Latin. But we prayed it every day, and they were all, you know, they, they were all given, they all had an oral quiz on it. They had to stand in front of the class and recite it by themselves, the Pater Noster, in front of the whole class. And if they chanted it, if they sung it, I gave them extra credit. And so, um, 
And it was neat. At the very beginning, back 16 you know, years ago when I first started, uh, well, now it's 18 years. I taught for 16 years. At the very beginning, um, you know, very few sung it. But towards the end, in my last few years, like 80, 90 percent of them all sung it. And so it was really neat. Uh, they would, you know, whether they knew how to sing or not, they would get up there and try it, and they would be willing to do it right in front of the whole class. Uh, any questions? Uh, yes, about uh, any of these words. Pater, 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 no stare. Ah, ah, a, ah, a, pater, pater, ah. So the vowels are all along. A, a, e, o, u. A, a, e, o, u. A, a, e, o, u. Pater, no stare. Qui, qui. So the Q used like a, uh, there's like like a W sound in there. Qui, qui. I think uh, is there a Spanish word Q Q U I? Qui, qui. Yeah. So it's it's not it's not pronounced like this. Yeah. A lot of my students who study Spanish would want to say qui, <laughs> but it's qui qui. There's a, a Q U I. So kind of that that U I becomes that W sound. Right. Qui es enchelis. Qui. Qui. Yes. In Ducas. Oh, in Ducas? Nenos in Ducas. It does normally. Some TV cherry tour. In. Ah, in. I think it should be. Am I not saying in? Uh, I'm saying in. I'm saying in Ducas. Et nenos in Ducas. In. In Ducas. In tentatio. Tentatio nos. Liberanos. No, it, it should be in Ducas. I think um, uh, maybe I'm not. Uh, maybe I'm not stressing it enough. <laughs> the uh, the in quotidianum. Co e quotidianum. In Ducas. Nos in Ducas. Et ne nos inducas. And you think it should be, what do you think it should be? Uh huh. I, in, inducas. In, inducas? So I'm not saying it long enough for you, is that what you're saying? <laughs> it's not long enough? Inducas? Et ne nos inducas? 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 I think I, I, it should be inducas, you're correct, right? But I think when you say it quickly, I might be shortening the E. And then those inducas. And then that's the other. The sanctifice, sa, sanctifice tour. Sanctifice tour. Sanctifice tour. Sanctificator. 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 No, it's not that sub because it's not followed by a vowel. Right? It's followed by a consonant. Sanctificator. So this, see, tentationum because it's followed by a vowel. But here it's followed by a consonant. So sanctificator. Right? Exactly. Yeah, very good. Sanctificator. Sanctificator. Nomen tuum. Dimitimus debitoribus. The students always have a problem with those two D words. Dimitimus debitoribus. Other questions with us? Pater noster quies in celis sanctificetur nomen tuum. Right, you, you hear the two, the two syllables. Tuum adveniat renum tuum. Right, regnum. See, if it was, if it were regnum, it doesn't, it doesn't, it wouldn't sound as good. Regnum. Adveniat regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicut in cielo et in terra, panem nostrum quotidianum da nobis odie. Et dimite nobis debita nostra, 
Sicut et nos dimitimus, debit hordibus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentation, sed libera nos a malo. So, uh, so if you learn to sing it, like I said, it'll be, it's always easier because the tune, right? The tune's pretty easy tune to remember, isn't it? Do you think it's an easy tune to, is it catchy? Is it catchy? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. Any other questions about the pater noster? Or any of those words that you haven't? Yes. Do you, you want to chant it? All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Yes. Let's let's do it out loud. Uh, I don't have the music. I don't have the music. But you guys, you guys have heard it enough times. Do you you know it? All right. Pater noster quies in celis sanctificetur nomen tu. Adveniat renum tu, fiat voluntas tua, sicut in cielo et in terra, panem nostrum quotidianum da nobis odie, et dimite nobis debita nostra. Sicut et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem, sed libera nos a malo. Tu um, tu um, tu um. Yeah, the two use tu um. Renum tu um, nomen tu um, renum tu um, tu um. Right, uu uu tu um, uu. Uh, yeah, I guess you don't see that a lot in English. Uh, yeah, uu uu, the tu um, tu um, tu um. But yeah, you say it quickly, it sounds like they run together, two um. It sounds like it's just one syllable. But it's, it's actually two, right? Two um. Two um. Any other questions on the Pater Noster or anything that we've done so far? Um, so eventually, eventually, once we get to Easter, or uh, after we get down the Pater Noster, then we're going to try to start doing, um, uh, we'll learn the Gloria, right, to sing the Gloria, right, and then uh, our hope is to eventually sing the Creed, right, the Creed, Credo in Unum Deum, right, Credo in un- you've heard this, Credo in Unum Deum. Patrem omnipotentem, factorum celi et ere, visibilium omnium, et invisibilium. Right? Uh, so, I can't sing, so. Uh, so the, uh, the Gloria will be the next thing we'll do. You can, you can hear what it sounds like, see if it sounds uh, like what you would expect. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Right? Here's what, this is what we have in our church. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Glory to God in the highest. Excelsis. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Et in terra pax omnibus bone voluntatis. Laudamus te, benedicimus te, adoramus te, glorificamus te. Gracias agimus tibi propter maniam. There's that, that nya again. Maniam gloriam tuam. Domine Deus rex celestis. Deus Pater Omnipotens, Domine Fili Unigenite, Jesu Christe, Domine Deus, Agnus Dei, Filius Patris, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis, qui tolis peccata mundi, suscipe deprecationem nostram, qui sedes ad dexteram patris, miserere nobis, 
quoniam, two, quoniam, so three syllables, quoniam, quoniam, tu solus sanctus, tu solus dominus, tu solus altissimus, Jesu Christe, cum sancto spiritu, in gloria Dei Patris. Amen. So Dei, right? Dei, two syllables. Dei Patris. Amen. Dei Patris. Amen. It says not agnus, it's agnus. Agnus, that enye, that nya sound, right? Agnus, agnus. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, Miserere nobis. So, Agnus, not Agnus Dei, Agnus, Agnus, Gaikanian. Dei, Dei. Now, yeah, they're swallowing the E, but Agnus, Agnus, yeah, it's Dei, Dei. Agnus Dei. Yeah, you may just not hear it because it might be right there at the end. Also, when you're when you're when you're chanting, um, when you're ch- so, I mean the, the I don't know what notation they have um, in the in the handouts that they that they give you for singing these, but you actually when you get to the to the end of a sentence, um, uh, 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 um, in 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 the chant, you you you're you're supposed to kind of swallow the ending. It's supposed to kind of die out. Um, and so oftentimes you don't hear the end, right, how it ends, um, uh, the kind of final vowel. It just kind of uh, it gets, gets swallowed up. It's kind of the proper way that it's supposed to be done uh, when you're singing a Gregorian chant with certain, in certain places. But yeah, it's agnus dei, dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus dei, agnus dei. Qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, Dona nobis pacem. Dona nobis pacem. Give us peace. Okay. And that there's that S between two vowels. So instead of miserere, 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 miserere nobis. Instead of miserere, instead of this, that hard S. Huh? Me. The A, where? Uh, oh, the, no, those are, those are the, um, well, they are plural, yes, but it's, it's, the, it's the we. So it's the moose is we praise, we bless, we adore. So, uh, so adoro, adoro te devote latens de. So adoro is I adore, adoramus is we adore, right? Right. So, it's, uh, they do that in Spanish, right? Amos, uh, Amos, um, uh, yeah. And this, so, yeah. So those are the plural. Those are all vowels. So uh, that's the plural and the vowels. Yes. The plural and nouns usually uh, doesn't always have that. And like this day. Uh, no, that's genitive. Agnus, that's singular. Uh, so this is actually singular, uh, lamb. Um, any plural vowels in here? Uh, Omnibus is plural, but... Um, uh, and this is, we give thanks. Praxis Agnus. So there's your Gloria, all right? And then we hope eventually to learn the creed, right? Credo and unum deum patrim omnipotentem factorum celi et terre visibilium omnium et invisibilium et in unum dominum Jesum Christum filium de unigenitum 
et ex patre natum ante omnia secula, Deum de Deo, Lumen de Lumine, Deum Verdum de Deo Verdo, Genitum non factum, consubstantialem, right? There's that consubstantial with the Father, right, that we get in the English, consubstantialem patri, per quem omnia facta sunt, qui propter nos omines et propter nostrum salutem, descendit de celis, et incarnatus est de Spiritus Sancto, ex Maria Virgine, et homo factus est, Crucifixus et siam pro nobis, su Pontio Pilato, passus et sepultus est, et resurrexit tertia die secundum scripturas, et ascendit in celum, sedet et dexteram patris, et iterum venturus est, cum gloria judicare vivos et mortos, cuius regni non edit finis, et in spiritum sanctum, dominum et vivificantem, que ex patre filioque procedit, qui cum patria et filio simul adorator et cum glorificator, qui locutus est per profetas et unam sanctam catholicam et apostolicam ecclesiam confiter unum baptismam remissionem peccatorum et expecto resurrectionem mortuorum et vitam venturi seculi. Amen. Have you guys heard of the famous filioque? filioque um, uh, have you heard that expression, the term filioque? It was part of what happened between the split between the East and the West, right? The famous division between the East and the West, uh, the Great Schism, right? That happened in the, the, early, the 11th century, right? Uh, the Filioque was part of that um, because the original, the original creed just said uh, who, who proceeds, who proceeds from the Father, from just the Father. We say from the Father and the Son, so, and the son in Latin is filioque. And, um, the, and, but the original uh, creed that was written at Nicaea and Constantinople did not have filioque in it. And what happened was that um, uh, there were some Christological heresies that had arisen, and people didn't believe that Jesus was God. And in Spain, they added this filioque, right? The Holy Spirit, it's talking about the Holy Spirit proceeding from the Father and the Son, showing that the, the, the Son, Christ, is part of the Trinity, right? People didn't believe that, so they added that filioque to the creed, and the Pope liked that addition because it stressed the divinity of Christ, and so he added it to the creed in the universal church. But over in the Eastern church, they said, you can't do that. You can't change the creed. The creed is our belief. It came from, a, from an ecumenical council, um, and so they said, no, you're teaching heresy, and that was part of what's made the split between uh, the East and the West. So that was a major controversy. Um, it's been reconciled. So, you know, we're saying we understand that we are saying the same thing and believe the same thing. We just express it differently. So um, it was just a way of stressing the, the divinity of Christ. So that's why that filioque is there. But it wasn't, uh, it wasn't in the original creed that was actually written at Nicaea and Constantinople. So, um, but that was a very famous controversy, the filioque controversy. So, but that's where it is, the filioque and the sun. That's what filioque means, and the sun. So eventually, we hope that you'll all be able to learn the, the, uh, and sing the creed, right? We'll sing the Gloria, right? Uh, sing the Gloria. I would imagine you've heard the Gloria song. Gloria in excelsis Deo, et in terra pax omnibus. Bone voluntatis, laudamus te, benedicimus te, adoramus te. So that, that's, that, that's, uh, that's Gloria 8. The, um, uh, there are different settings for all these things. And hopefully we'll learn new settings also for the Agnus Dei and the Sanctus, right? Uh, also, the ones. Uh, so just so you know, the Sanctus and Agnus Dei that we sing. Right, that you all know, that's, that's uh, written for funerals. So <laughs> that's what it's made for. So it's, it's, it was really uh, it's appropriate to be used at, um, during Lent and Easter penitential seasons and at funerals. But that's why um, it's, it was the simplest, and so that's why they, they put it in the Jubilate Deo, the document, to kind of teach people how to, um, uh, you know, they said the minimum that we should know. 
but it's really meant for funerals. So, um, so that's why I, I, I'm never a fan when we use it like during Easter or, or Christmas because it's not really appropriate for the really joyful seasons because that, that tune is really meant for a, um, uh, for a, a more somber or you know, penitential time, so, which is what funerals and, and Lent and Advent are. Right? So, the Gloria 8, the mass of, mass of the angels, have you heard? Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus. Have you guys heard that song, too? All right, that's Gloria 8. That's the, called Misa de Angelis, the Mass of the Angels. That's much, right, much more beautiful, much more appropriate for like Easter and Christmas, right, for those sorts of seasons. That's one of the most popular ones that you'll hear if you go to papal masses for the big ones. Uh, you'll hear that. Uh, well, that's, I mean, all these are, anytime you're singing, it's a Misa Cantata. So a Misa Cantata just means sung Mass. So a Misa Cantata could be the, the you know, the... Requiem one, or it could be that Mass eight. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of settings. Right? Any other questions about uh, any of that pronunciation? Right? Was that uh, you just have to see it a little bit to, but once you learn the rules, it's actually quite easy. Once you know uh, these rules for how to pronounce all the vowels and the consonants, um, then. Uh, you know, it's just a matter of applying them, but if, you know, if you don't do it often. But these are, are, uh, are really the only ones mostly you need to know. This in the Pater Noster, if you're in any sort of mass. And again, this is cum spiritu tuo. There should be a C there. And with your spirit, uh, cum is with. Right? That's where we get the, all the co words in English. When you say co, co something, that comes from the Latin cum, uh, with. Right? Uh, I, I mean, singing, I think, is the best way. But. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So all of these, all of these things are now on YouTube. You know, they're they're all on the internet that you can download and you can listen to. Right as you as you pray in your car, it can, easy easy to learn the Ave Maria and the Pater Noster, the Gloria, Gloria Patri, Fidio Spiritui Sancto. Right? So you can learn all those. Right? You can, it's just a matter of hearing it, um, and yeah, repetition. But I, I just like with anything else, I think singing is usually the easiest way to learn. So if you if you sing them, I think you'll you know uh, learn it most quickly. But again, if you sing it, you might not be able to say it. <laughs> so, uh, but, uh, so it can be good to do both. <laughs> uh, there are much better versions of it than what I could do, so you prefer to do those. Mm -hmm. And I know that some people uh, had asked to do, learn to do the Missal for the traditional Latin Mass, so we've scheduled another time for doing that, so we're going um, uh, to, to help. On the 21st, so we'll be putting that out to be going through, and uh, hopefully we'll have that recorded as well. So that'll be in the bulletin, so it's three weeks from tonight. Okay. And so we'll be together and, and look forward to having more teaching from Father to go through the Roman Missile. So thank you so much. All right. Father. Okay. <laughs> why, don't, why don't we end with an Ave and then I'll give you a blessing. In nomine Patris, Sophia, Spiritus Sancti, Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tua mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tua Jesus, Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora per nobis peccatoribus. Nunc et in ora mortis nostre. Amen. Dominus Fabiscum. Benedicat vos omnipotens Deus, Pater, Filius, et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen. Ite in pace. Deo gratias. There you go.